So first thing is, who are you and what on earth do you do? Okay, I'm Vince Morris. Um, I'm teaching martial arts. I have been doing that most of my life. Uh, I began training in the martial arts in judo when I was about 10 years old and uh, um, then for the last 50 years or so I've been teaching or training in karate. I started off with uh, the infamous Charlie Mack in London for a few months and then all I had were Japanese teachers after that. And it was, has been my life ever since. Um, I've obviously been a musician as well but uh, and at one time I was teaching in universities but my basic uh, ethos has been trying to come to grips with the original martial arts because I was always totally dissatisfied with what I was taught in the dojo by my Japanese teachers who basically uh, said well the way to gain understanding is just to train harder well you know the more times you train at doing something wrong, the better you get at doing something wrong. It's as simple as that. So at the time I was researching a PhD at the university and teaching in the department, so I was used to being a researcher. So I set my mind to looking at what was the truth behind the reality of martial arts as a combat system. And it soon became very obvious to me that karate that was being practiced in my dojo and by the Japanese was totally far away different from that which was originally practiced in Okinawa. In Japan, thanks to the influences of Jigoro Kano and Master Funakoshi, all the dangerous techniques, the finger jabs to the eyes, the chops to the throat, the stamping on the shins, the knees to the groin, the head butts, the eight or nine major throws that Funakoshi himself used to practice all were taken out and uh, in my dojo I was told no no just punching and kicking leg sweeps were fine but no throws in karate and so at the time it was obvious to me that the tripos of training basics uh, 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 kata and kumite basics the solo practice and the fighting they didn't link up because you'd spend hours doing basic techniques and then you'd do kata in which you had to apply those basic techniques in a certain system and then it came to fighting and you never saw anything that you'd spent the first part doing in the fighting not even with the Japanese techniques that they taught all the time as basic techniques I never in all my life saw them use them in actual competition fighting or in any other kind of fighting so I was concerned of wh why wh what's gone wrong here wh why the disparity between what we're taught is a deadly martial art and what actually is just a fairly safe sport dynamic powerful fantastic yes but all the things that the original karate taught you back in Okinawa to defend your life and the lives of your family and friends were removed when that art transferred to Japan and it became a safe, dynamic, powerful sport. But, and here's the nub that drove me, if somebody came up to me in a bar, say, not that I was ever in a bar, but and wanted a stand-up fight, then yes, I, along with most other competent martial artists, could deal with it. But what if the guy jumped me from behind and put a knife at my throat? How would I deal with that? I had no idea because all of those aspects of karate had been taken out in favour of just a one-on-one -on -one sport. So then I began to look at the katas and I suddenly realised that they held the key to the missing bits. For example, in Shotokan you have five series of kata called the Heians. Now they were changed from what was called in Okinawa the Pinans. They're the five basic katas. In the Pinan katas, all the angles are 45 degree angles. You turn at a 45 degree angle and execute your technique. In Japan, every angle had been changed from 45 to 90, which meant what originally you sidestepped and you had an attacker at 45 degrees to you. Now, because you'd sidestepped at a 90 degree angle, the attacker wasn't in striking range anymore. So the whole thing had been compromised 
by changes made to the actual form of how you applied the te basic techniques that you've been practicing. And then, for example, in the kata, originally you had snap kicks, front kicks. They were all front kicks, done at 45 degree angles or straight to the front. The Japanese immediately changed them to side kicks, side snap kicks, which meant you had to be much more athletic, which is fine. And for sports people, yes, brilliant, you need to be athletic. But karate, along with other martial arts, was never devised for one martial artist to fight another. They were devised to allow practicing regular ordinary human beings without rubber legs to actually defend themselves and their families against attacks by bandits and thugs and rapists and the like. Two totally different animals. But because the Japanese picked their best fighters to go out into the world and impress everyone with their fighting ability, and believe me, they're bloody good, the actual truth of the fact that they'd left behind 90% of the martial art was overlooked. In Kisakikai, we've put back the five levels of training. For example, we do throwing. We have a whole level on throwing, which most karate dojos don't look at. And then they do the katas, and they don't see the throws in them. Why? Because if you don't practice something, you don't recognize it when you fall over it. We practice the Kyusho, the vital point striking, because the human body is covered with useful, and a lot of non-useful, uh, areas which are vulnerable to strikes and to pressure and to manipulation and gouging in a combat situation. But then the flim-flam artists jumped in on that, and they learned a few simple tricks and suddenly developed it into a, a scheme of selling snake oil. Oh, it's all to do with developing balls of chi energy and throwing them at people. And you have to stop the power, you stop the energy flow in this meridian and not that meridian. Meridians were a concept invented by a Frenchman after the Napoleonic Wars. They were never there in original Chinese acupuncture or uh, Chinese medicine. And all this concept of chi, the humours in medieval um, medicine, the black bile, the phlegm, the collar, they're just the European examples of exactly the same concepts of the flows of energy within the human body. But in the West we advanced because we actually dissected bodies and we got into real medicine. It didn't happen in China. So they kept propagating the same old BS, you know, it's all to do with energy. No, it isn't. If I could have taught my officers in the police academy to knock down an enemy attacking him with a ball of chi. Don't you think I'd have done it? Well, it's, it's BS, and people have made a lot of money out of selling BS to gullible people. The same snake oil that the bullshit preachers make when they tap their acolytes on the head and drop them in the aisles. It's the same want to be part of the mystique, want to do something magical. There is no magic except what you see me sitting here in now, which is sweat. That's the only magic you get. And that's what you need to get rid of the BS. Do your own research. And by the way, I always tell my students, don't believe what I say. I could lie to you just the same as everyone else. Do your own research. It's there in black and white. Choki Motobu, one of the best known and most powerful Okinawan masters in karate, despised the karate that he found in Japan. He particularly hated Funakoshi's karate. And he said, there's nothing more dangerous in the world than a martial art that only looks like the real thing. And that is in fact what happens when you see martial arts movies, when you see people doing their fantastic slow motion catters and building up the chi and the kimais. And the, it's bullshit. You couldn't, you think your life will be saved by doing that down a dark alley? I'm afraid not. So get real. If you want to practice sport karate, I don't mind that. I think that's fine. I loved it. I was in a championship team for four years or more. I got medals in kata and in kumite. I represented my country. I loved fighting, but I knew it wasn't real. And the fact is, reality these days, look, how much martial arts is developed and helping you to defend against knife attacks, for example. What is a sport karateka going to teach you about that? 
oh, jumping, spinning back kick maybe. Yeah, some little old lady in a hobble skirt's going to jump up and do a flying spinning back kick, I am sure. It's BS. So where would one find this real karate? Yes, it come to you, but where else could one, yeah, people the, around there? There aren't many people that do it. There are people that sell themselves as bunkai experts. And believe me, when I started this more than 25 years ago, I was the only one in Europe doing it. You can check that too, because I'll lie, but check it. There was no one else. I used to teach, even the jujitsu, I was the first person to teach the vital points and everything to the um, Belgium Ju National Jiu-Jitsu Federation, for example, whose old master said to me, we knew there was something, but we didn't know what it was, now we do. And yes, because using the vital points properly is so effective, but guess what? You'd be disqualified if you used them in competition. You couldn't do it, you're not allowed to. How many times do you practice, if you're a normal sport karateka, doing things that would get you disqualified? Well, you never practice them. So therefore, when it comes to push comes to shove, how good will you be at doing it? You won't be any good at it at all. So, I am not the only person talking about real, defensive, original karate. But, I have got a track record that you can research for yourself you can look at what I do, and I tell everybody, test it for yourself. Don't believe what I say. Try me. Just have a go, you know, and I'll stand in front of you and you can do what you like. And I'm, and I'm 75 this year and I don't give a damn because I know it works. So what, would you, what do you think Bunkai is? is? Does it have any meaning in reality in...? It's the only reality. Because Bunkai doesn't say you have to step into a Zenkutsu long distance stance and you have to have your hands down by your... That's called a ready stance. You're always ready to get your teeth knocked out. I mean, it's unbelievable. And people fall for this BS because, oh, Japanese sensei will give him respect. No, let him earn respect like I have to. You don't, don't believe what I say. Try me. But you really think putting your hands down by your sides is a good way of getting ready to stop being punched in the mouth? You've got no brains left, boy. You've got to think something out. It's a different way of doing things. So you've seen it on the internet. You've seen how people get attacked. You've seen how they get jumped from the side, from the back. You've seen these people get sucker punched because they've got their hands down. We teach right from the start. Ready, stance, in Kisaki Kai's hands up just close to your face, never down by your sides, never long stances you could drive a bus through. Most people are not going to step in with long jumping oizuki punches. They're going to be right in your face and they're going to headbutt you or they're going to punch you where they stand. And your defences have to work from that very close position. Anything else, you're fooling yourself. Bunkai, sorry, but Bunkai is the explanation of how to do it. It shows you what situations you can combat. It shows you suggestions of what techniques to use to actually be effective. And not one of those techniques would be allowed in modern sport karate. Could you just sort of give us an, an overview of what you think Kyusho and pressure points actually mean? You touched on it briefly. Okay, it's, it's, it's very easy because there's no bullshit in it. All that pressure point fighting means is, and I have a book on it there, and a book and a DVD on it, if anyone's interested. Um, the human body has a central nervous system which governs just about everything it does. Um, sometimes it's the parasympathetic system, it's the autonomic system. It's, it doesn't matter what big words you call it, it's the fact that nerves take messages to your brain to do stuff. And some areas of the body are easier to hit or attack or make react to stimuli. If I want someone to fall down quickly, I will hit them, where do you think? On the top of the skull where it's going to hurt my hand or in the throat where it's going to knock them down quickly. That's a vital point. Do I want to kick them in the groin or do I want to kick them on the shoulder? I, I can show you vital points. There's a whole ripping art where you get the skin and the tendons and you rip and tear when people are, are in very close or have you down on the ground. 
Uh, those you have to know, otherwise some Marsh MMA guy is going to get on top of you and beat the crap out of you. But if you know how to rip the skin, if you know how to put shock and, uh, and pain into the system, it gives you a fighting chance because the human body has got strong areas and vulnerable and not any of them is governed by flows of chi, it's access to the central nervous system. So you learn to strike, push, bite, rip, areas of the body which have a fast immediate effect on making the body do something it didn't want to do, which is in your favour. What point, what's the point to karate? Does it have a point in today's modern world? It's dominated by MMA and whatever else, sport karate. Well look, it, it, I'm, I, I, it's a big world, you can please yourself. I have no objections to, to sport karate. I just want people to stop conning the students. They put all these things up on YouTube, you know, this is a defence against this, and they show something from Japanese sport karate, long stances, and like the guy will stand there with his fist out until you finish doing what it is you want to do to him. Do you, do you really think it's like that? Get real. Tell your students this is a sport, and it's a great sport, and it does help you because Competition gives you a chance to overcome nerves, it gives you a chance to build up spirit and courage, it helps you with timing. I'm all in favour of that, but that should only be a small part of the whole gamut of what real karate is. Ground fighting, uh, joint locking, uh, uh, using the vital points, throwing, and then the striking and the rest of it. So modern sport karate is only a very small part of what is there for you. And I don't even care, because if people have given the proper choice, but so many people are taught by black belts, that, wherever they got those from, and who were they taught by, how legitimate was their system, how deep is their knowledge? You notice on my seminars, I ask them on the post, come to me, bring your questions. You've got months to think of your questions. Come to me, ask me. If I don't know, I'll, t I'll lie to you. No, well, I'll tell you I don't know, but you deserve an honest answer. I mean, I was an, ac an academic for a, a long time and, and my students deserve the truth. And so they do now. And the truth is great because at 75, do you really think I could still be fighting in the dojo now doing my jumping, spinning, back kicks? Most dojos don't have people over 40, 45 in them anymore. It's for kids. And for kids, it's great. But once you get to the point where the first person that walks into the dojo at 13 years old can kick your head off, it's time for a change, time to get real. One last question is, what would you have done if you didn't do karate? And is there something that, oh, is, I, I, is, something, is there something inherent in it that has uh, developed you, produced the person that you now are? Well, I'm a stubborn bugger. Uh, and my teacher, Asana, the very first time I met him, he kicked me in the head so hard, I woke up upstairs in the, in the toilets where they, put, they were holding my head under the tap. And I couldn't see out of my left eye for a week. But I got up and went back down and joined in the line. And he said, no, I said, I paid my, I think it was 50 pence then, I paid my 50 pence, I'm staying. And he, every Friday, every Friday, for years after that, he'd beat me up and knock me down. He'd keep me out there much longer than anyone else. In fact, the other students in the dojo, the other black belts would, would end up looking the other way so as not to look at what he was doing to me. And at one time, it got so bad, because I was an asthmatic as well in those days, I thought I was going to die in the dojo. And as he knocked me down for the umpteenth time and I, could, I couldn't breathe, I thought as I lay there, if I die now, I'll beat him because he's got to explain my body to the police. So I got up, and then it stopped. But that's the truth. That's how illogical you can get when you're a stubborn bugger. <laughs> but I would have been a musician, I would have been a rock singer. I ran away from school when I was 15 to join a rock band, and that's what I was doing most of my time. And I still play every day. Thank you very much.